His way is so much better. His way is so much greater than our way. And he's having his way this morning. God, I thank you for what you're doing. God, and for what you're going to do. I pray, Lord, the anointing and the power of your spirit move in this place, God, greater in a mightier way, Lord. For I know you spoke this word to my heart, Jesus, for this season and for this day. Lord, I ask you, use me for your glory, O oh God. God, and cause us to hear and have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church this morning. God, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. I've never done this before, but there's something burning inside of me. It's probably just for me. The Lord's telling me it's time for us to wake up and get out of our shells Amen. and to, you know, to, be, to be aware of what's going on, the ones whom he has called. So we know who we are. Y'all know who we are. It's time to wake up. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you could turn with me this morning to John chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8. Verse 31. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. I can't wait to get to glory. I can't wait to get to glory and just worship at His throne because this is what we're going to be doing all day long. So if you don't like to worship, well, you better get in the river now because this is what we're going to be doing all day long. And I can't wait presence. I can't wait. God, hallelujah, Jesus. The title of my message this morning is whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And something my brother just said, he said, it's time to wake up and to get out of our shells and I don't know about you, and I know I'm just like automatically loud and from New Jersey, and that's okay. But one thing that I've learned over a period of time of living for the Lord, that it is okay to express yourself to the Lord. He wants you to express yourself to Him, whether it's through dancing, whether it's through worship, whether it's through bowing down, lifting your hands, crying out, whatever way your expression, because we're unique, we're not cookie cutters, so we're all going to do it in a different way, but it's okay to express yourself to the Lord. So if you want to get up and lift your hands, then get up and lift your hands. If you want to run around this church, and I don't know if anybody's ever done it before, I haven't, but I've seen it, and the Spirit of the Lord begins to move on you, then do what He moves on you to do. My brother said, I've never done this before, but it's a burning sensation shut up in my bones, and he just had to say it. Feel free to express yourself to the Lord this morning. Last time I was here, that's, this is what I felt like the Lord spoke to my heart, that there's a freedom that he wants to rain down in this place. And it's okay that even in our pain and our agony or our confusion or our discomfort to still press in and allow him to minister to you in those places. But don't forget in those times to express yourself to the Lord because in those times he'll be able to move through you. He'll be able to work in you when you, listen, this morning I'll tell you this is for me too this morning because I've been going through a certain trial and I know, don't think just because we stand up here or somebody stands somewhere that we're not going through it too because it takes a lot for me to stand up here this morning and to deliver this message but I believe that the Lord wants to rain down freedom in this place this morning not just for you but it's for me I'm going to get my blessing this morning I'm going to get my freedom this morning I'm going to 
the virtue and power of God can flow. And that's exactly what was happening this morning. And we have to be taught those things. Because those things don't just come natural. I had to be taught to tarry. I had to be taught to sit in his presence and pre press through all those things. He wants us. That's why I say he's calling us mm -hmm. to do that. So my, what I came to speak to you about this morning is freedom. There's freedom in Christ. There's freedom not just in the church house on Sunday morning, but there's freedom every second of every day of your life. No matter what you're facing, there's still a freedom that could be inside. Whether you're sick, there's a freedom that can still reign. Whether you're, fa you're going through family problems, there's still a freedom that you can have to worship the Lord. There's a freedom when you see loved ones that aren't saved or you're having a financial situation. There's still freedom to worship the Lord in those situations. Because when we set our eyes towards him, he can turn those things around. Just one moment in his presence can set us free. The enemy will do everything in his power to get you to look at your outside circumstances and even your inward issues. But there's still a freedom because you are placed in Christ. When you gave your heart to the Lord and said yes to him, he took you and he placed you in him. So your, your position is in Christ. Yes. And as long as your faith stays in Christ, you stay in Christ. And there's a freedom that reigns in Christ. Despite what the enemy has to throw your way. The scripture reads, John 8, 31. It says, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I thought it was interesting the setting of this chapter when you begin in chapter 8. Jesus is on the top of Mount Olives and he's spending time with his father. And when he comes down all filled up, he goes to teach in the synagogue and while he's teaching in the synagogue and I want to remind you we're speaking on freedom this morning is while he's teaching in the synagogue the scribes and the Pharisees and I'm setting the tone for whom the sun sets free is free indeed the scribes and the Pharisees drag a woman that was caught in the act of adultery mm -hmm. and they throw her before Jesus and before the congregation. Now these scribes and Pharisees are men that are to know they know they know God. They know his laws and his rules and people go to them. They look up to them. They're wealthy. They're they're known in the community to have to know God. But they drag this woman to shame her and to bring guilt and condemnation upon her. And they set her before the master. When they set her before the master, they're trying to test him. To see what he will do with her. They don't care about her. They don't care about what she's been through. They wanted to prove themselves that they could keep the law. But Jesus covers this woman in love. Jesus looks at her, but it knows what he is going to do on the cross. And when he looks at her, all he can see is the blood 
of Jesus that's going to cover her. So he knows, he knows that the law is going to be fulfilled when he dies on Calvary as a spotless lamb of God who takes away the sin of this world. He knows that. And in knowing that, I'm talking about knowing something this morning that we need to know in whom we've been placed in. We need to know and believe in the blood of Jesus Christ because when this woman was caught in this act, all the rest of the congregation wanted to throw her out. But Jesus wanted to set her free. So many times we look at people and we're like, they're not going to make it. They're just not getting it. But take a look at some areas that maybe we might just not be getting. Right, right. Maybe our sin isn't shown in, in, in the light of everyone else, but we know what we struggle with inside. We know what goes on in our heart. And Jesus had compassion on this woman. And he said, he who cast the first stone, but none of them. None of them could throw a stone because the Bible reads that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and there is none righteous. No, not one. Hallelujah. So when they stood before her and the convicting power of the Spirit of God hit them, none of them could throw a stone. Right, right. Amen. They had to look at themselves. And they walked away. But the beautiful thing I think about this story is when the accusers, the one that came to taunt, and see, we can even do it to ourselves. Right. Come on. And the enemy can even do it. Are you ever reminded of a mess up that you had over and over and over and over, and you remind yourself over and over and over, and the failure just keeps showing up over and over and over? The accuser of the brethren. But Jesus didn't accuse her at all. He knew her condition. He knew the state that she was in. And I love it because it says, they all left glory to God and the power and the presence of God. Every enemy, every accusing spirit, every lie that would come against you, anything that would taunt you and bring a distraction or guilt or condemnation in the presence of the master, it's got to go. It's got to go. And she was just left standing there with just Jesus. It says she was left alone with just Jesus. And he said to her, where are the accusers of yours? And she said, they're nowhere to be found. And he said, go and sin no more. He set her free at that moment. Amen. And that doesn't mean that we're not going to mess up. That doesn't mean she was going to live a perfectly sinless life. But as we continue to trust and to believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, then he can begin to work those things out in our lives and set us free. Moment by moment, day by day, freedom is coming. Freedom is here. Yeah. This yeah. morning and what yeah. we did in worship, I don't know your situations and circumstances, but there was a freedom. There was an uplifting of the spirit this morning, no matter what you're facing. And I love that the Holy Spirit set it up this way where this story was right before Jesus was going to speak, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Because the Bible says in John 3.17 that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, condemnation is to punish and to legally declare guilty. God didn't send his son so he could rub it in your, our faces that we're all guilty. Amen. He sent his son to save, which is the word sozo, which means to save, to deliver, 
and to protect. So he doesn't just save us at the moment of salvation from sin, but he delivers us moment by moment and day by day, and he protects and maintains what he does in your life. Let me say that again. He doesn't just save you at the moment of salvation, but he wants to deliver you moment by moment, situation after situation, freedom by freedom. Then he wants to maintain the work that he's already done. Praise God that he didn't come down just to say you're guilty. He said, okay, you're guilty, but I've made a way for you to be justified, for you to be legally declared before God not guilty. See, when he looked at that woman, he couldn't help but say, not guilty, not guilty. She's not guilty. Not based on her mess up, because she did. But based on the blood of the Lamb of God, he could make that decision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it when they said that she was alone because I feel like I'm in a place in my walk a lot of the time where I feel alone. And one of the things God revealed to me a while ago was Paul spent a lot of time in Tarsus before God brought him out, revealing the message of the cross to him. And he was alone with God. No one else was there before Barnabas showed up and said, come with me. John, who wrote this book, spent time on the island of Patmos, God revealing the book of Revelations to him. I mean, I'm talking about intimacy with God. I'm talking about knowing your God. I'm talking about knowing the freedom that you have in Christ, that even in a lonely, dark time, you can still have freedom. And he can still reveal himself to you in a mighty and a powerful way. But are we willing to go? How about Moses when he got the law on the Mount of Sinai? He was all by himself, alone with God. Some of the greatest moves of God, some of the greatest revelations of God happened when these men were alone with God. When no one else was there. And the same, think about this, the same thing that he did for these great men of God that we read about in the Bible, he did for this woman. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Great men of God, we all read about them in the Bible. Patriarchs of the faith. Okay, yeah, God revealed himself to them. Yeah, we got that. But God didn't just reveal himself to the great men of God. He revealed himself to this woman. I love that. He's not a respecter of persons. He will honor a diligent, seeking heart. Yes. Verse 31, 8, 31, it says, Then said Jesus to the Jews, which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. Continue in my word means to continue in the truth that you have already received. They believed on him. Believed means pisteo, which means to have faith and to entrust one's spiritual well-being to Christ. I know sometimes myself, and I don't know about you, but I'm sure you do, we can trust this area to Christ and that area to Christ and this place to Christ, but we're just going to hold back on this area of our heart or this area of our lives. See, but this is saying that we, we to believe if we call ourselves disciples, we call ourselves believers, we call ourselves Christians. Well, that means you must entrust your whole spiritual well-being into the hands of the master. Those that believe on him will do that. If you can 
continue in my word, the scripture says. There's a clause there, if. That means some will and some won't. If you continue in my word. Continue me means men, meno, excuse me, in the Greek. And it says to stay in a given place with expectancy. So hold on. You don't just know the word. A lot of people like to, uh, you ever meet somebody that has a scripture for everything? Yeah. Yes. Well, me and I are one of those people. We can come up with a scripture for everything, but I don't mean it in that way. I mean those people that have a scripture for everything and they're just trying to show their knowledge of the word of God. Okay, well, I understand that knowledge can puff up, but show me your fruit. Are you continuing in the word with expectancy? When the trials of life come, are we continuing to believe the word of God and stand and stay in that place with expectancy? With I know who I serve and I know he's going to move and I know. Do we stay there and hold on to the horns of the altar and continue to believe God? See, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. See, when he was set in the stage for this chapter, he was talking to a religious group of men. And he was revealing himself and telling them that they don't really know him. See, and then he begins to tell us that if you continue in my word, see, he can reveal himself to us, but we need to receive him and receive the word of God, but then put it into action and believe the word of God and wait with an expectancy and let him reveal his faithfulness to us. Amen. God doesn't want a bound church. He doesn't want a dead church, and he doesn't want a dead person, and he doesn't want a bound person either. See, we can come as we are to Jesus. You don't have to clean up your act at the door and then come into the church house. You don't have to clean up your act before you go to the cross. When something happens, or you see something in yourself, Go the way that you are. Come as you are so he can do the work, so he can fix you, so he can set you free. And I'm not just talking about, well, pain can be bondage. Sometimes we can be in such great pain in our hearts or in our emotions that it can keep us bound. I remember when I lost my father and how bound I felt inside and I didn't even know the Lord and I went on a really ugly path but it took me to give my heart to Jesus and that pain from losing my dad it didn't go away overnight right, right, right. it took a constant surrender to the Lord giving it to him over and over and over and over and over again that that pain can begin to dissipate and he can begin to heal my heart I like it says, he says, continue in my word. And I was thinking about how in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So he's not just saying continue in the word of God, but he's saying continue in your faith in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Continue in me. See, because I am the word. So continue believing in me. <clears throat> Believing isn't just for a moment at salvation, but believing is progressive. Continue process over a period of time. So I ask yourself this morning, and I had to ask myself, examine ourselves to see if we be in the faith. Where's our faith this morning? What are we trusting in? What are we believing in? What are our eyes set towards? This morning, because he said to continue in the word, which is to continue in him. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you 
free. See, the religious, they knew the word, but they didn't know him. And I can tell you, I remember before I received the message of the cross that I loved Jesus. I did. And I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and I was even healed of something. But I was so dead inside. I was so dead. I couldn't even lift my hands a lot of the time to worship him because I was constantly looking at myself. I was constantly looking at my struggle or my sin or I didn't know what I had in him. And that's something that we need to know that's going to carry us through. You need to know that you are righteous by the blood of the Lamb, not based on your works, but based on what He's already done. You need to know that you are being sanctified and changed daily by the blood of the Lamb. You need to know that you are being delivered daily by the blood of the Lamb, that He is Jehovah Jireh, your provider, so He made a way over the world, over the flesh, over the devil, so Whatever comes your way, there's still victory in the blood of Jesus that you are in him and you are planted in him and nothing can move you and nothing can shake you as long as you stay in him and your faith stays in him. I didn't know I could come in and worship the Lord despite the fact I just failed out in the car before I came in because I can look at the blood of the lamb. I didn't know that when I woke up in the morning and I had my heart set towards something else that I could still worship because of the blood of the lamb. I didn't know those things. So I stayed in a constant turmoil and bondage. But I've come to tell you this morning that you can still worship because of the blood of the lamb. Don't look at what you've done. Look at who he is. Look at what he's done for you on Calvary. Look at him. And one day you're going to wake up and say, I don't do that anymore. I don't think that way anymore. And all you're going to be able to say is glory and honor belongs to you. I worship you. Because it's nothing that we can do. It's only what he's already done. And there is freedom in that. Hallelujah. You're free to worship him. You're free to pray to him. You're free to praise him. You are free this morning. I think he wants you to know that this morning. That you are free based on the blood. Nothing else. Just the blood of Jesus. See, but he allows us to see our spiritual condition, so we turn to him. He allows circumstances and situations to come up, so we turn to him. Because if if he didn't, then we would think we had it all together. And we don't, just in case you needed to know that this morning. I don't. But John 10 10, 10 says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. See, I remember thinking as a Christian, I lived, Pastor Bob likes to say it, miserable Christianity. (laughs) And I liked that because that's what I was living. I was like, man, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. But I'm like, I'm miserable. Why? Am I miserable? Because I was looking at the circumstances. I was looking at the situations. I was looking at my own sin. Instead of just repenting and looking at the blood. And knowing that the power was only in the blood. And when I begin, listen, when you begin to get a hold of that. Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to continue in the word. You're going to continue in him. You're going to continue to believe him. Because when you do that, now the Holy Spirit has access to you to be able to move in you and through you. So the grace of God then takes 
over. Come on. See, you're not doing it in your own strength anymore. You're not trying to fix that hurt or pain or fix that sin or bondage by yourself anymore. How many times you pray? How many times you fast? Listen, all those things are good. But just, listen, keep it simple. Just look to the blood of Jesus Christ. Just look to the blood. Sometimes all I can say when things come up is the blood. That's right. Just the blood. Right. Oh, I don't, I don't know what the blood. I don't know what the blood. I don't know what the blood. Just keep going towards the blood. And he will break through in all of your situations. See, he wants to give you abundant life. A life of excess. And I'm not talking about material excess. Which God does bless. And I'm so grateful for that. But he wants to give you spiritual access. That even if you're like Joseph in the pit. You still have the power of God with you. And you could still praise him. That even if you're like Paul and Silas in the prison. And being in stocks and chains. You still got a praise on the inside. That begins to bubble up on the inside of you. He wants to give you spiritual excess to carry you through. Hallelujah. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Setting us free. See, at the moment of salvation, when you said yes to Jesus, you were free. You were free there. <coughs> Simple. I didn't know who Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John were when I first got saved. I didn't know the Bible at all when I first got saved. And I got saved when I was 23 years old. And I didn't know anything about the Word of God. But the moment I said yes to Jesus, I didn't have to know Genesis to Revelation to be set free. I didn't have to know the Greek words and the Greek alphabet. To be set free. I didn't have to know any of that. I just had to say yes yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. And then he would set me free. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. So don't feel like you have to have this wealth of knowledge to overcome everything that you need. No, you have in you what you need to walk in victory and to walk in freedom the moment you said yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise God that we do. Freedom to worship him and praise him and live for him. But he doesn't want he doesn't want to stop there. Because I don't know about you, but I still have struggles. And I still have things that I don't like that I see inside of me and I still have things that bother me. He but he wants to continue to make you free. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. <clears throat> Recognize your need for him and your need for grace and your need for his spirit. See, he's going to let you face some things yeah. to see our need for him. This trunk right here. You guys know I like object lessons. <laughs> I like it because it really you really get to see. See, a lot of the times when we come into salvation, we come bearing some weight. We're carrying a lot. We've been through a lot. The world a lot of times has ate us up and spit us out. We've seen a lot. And we come into salvation and we have this trunk. And we're dragging this trunk around. We're dragging it and dragging it. And Jesus says, okay, just give it to me. So we let go for that moment. And we give it to him. And we're excited, happy as a clam. And we're, and we're, and we're loving Jesus. But then the, some things begin to happen. Jesus allows circumstances and situations to come up in our lives. And he says, okay, I want to work on some things that are inside your life. 
So he begins to, and I just used DVDs as an example, and I was going to use books, but they were way too heavy. But the burden, the burden is heavy. Think about it. So Jesus is like, okay, let's work on that family member that you can't seem to forgive. That hurts you. Right, come on. Or that uh, old friend. Or some of us have been through, through some really serious things in life. And real things that were legit. That we hurt over. That were real to us. That we were in. Some people I know have been attacked in all kinds of different things. And Jesus still says... I want you to forgive that you can release them, but not only release them, but I want to set you free. Right, right. See, that anger that you've been holding on to, I want to set you free. Right. That bitterness and resentment and fear and anxiety and guilt and shame, but that all of a sudden we're like, whoa, Jesus, that's enough. <laughs> Because you see it all over their face. And they're just dragging that thing along. And Jesus is like, I said, come to me. All those who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, labor is a reducing of strength, feeling fatigue, of hard working, and you're weary. Anybody ever feel like that? Yeah. Feeling fatigue, okay? That you've just been working too hard, reducing of strength. See, when I'm not going to carry this thing attached to me all day long, it's going to irritate Amen. me. It's going to frustrate me. I'm going to get tired. It's going to reduce my strength. Yeah. So all those burdens that you've been keeping, that we've been keeping, locked up. And then I liked this. It said heavy laden was overburdened spiritual anxiety <laughs> like you're carrying cargo from a ship. So some of us have been carrying cargo on our backs. Still, you're still saved. We're still saved. We're still living for the Lord. But we just insist on carrying this thing around. And honestly, I'm sick and tired of carrying that around up here. Amen. <laughs> and then we try to like lay in the burden and let him deal with some things. And then we want to pick it back up again. Let it go. That's what I have to say this morning. Is let it go. Whatever you've been facing. And some things, they take the grace of God to let go. I know I was telling the Lord this morning, Lord, I don't know how to let that go, but your grace, by your grace, Lord, by your grace, Lord, by your grace, I'm going to let it go. By faith and grace, I'm going to let it go. By the blood, I'm going to let it go. And sometimes he gets deep in there and you just got to keep letting it go. And you're like, okay, Lord, like. It's enough, Lord. And But you know what? I love, I love the Lord because he doesn't leave you with nothing in you. He pours himself Amen. in you. And he gives you love. And he gives you peace. And he gives you power. And he gives you his presence. And he even places people in your life. And all kinds of different things begin to happen, but it can't, that can't happen until we allow him to do that in us. And I don't know about you, but at the end he said, I will give you rest. Just sit down. Sit down and rest. Stop working. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop making yourself frustrated. Just look to the blood and rest. Rest. Let him take your burden. Let him take your anxieties. Let him take your fears. Let him take your troubles. And just rest. Rest in him. 
See, in order though to get that stuff out, the situations and circumstances in our life sometimes get hotter and hotter and hotter. <coughs> like a tea kettle on the stove and then it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and then it blows, the whistle blows. Anybody ha ever have those whistle blowing moments in our lives? Okay, and then all that stuff just spews out of the box. I wish I had one of those boxes that just like popped all this stuff out, but that's what happens. You know, and I love the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because despite how hot the flames got, right. see, but I want to share something with you because I love this, is, see, he, they, they wouldn't worship Nebuchadnezzar. They wouldn't worship this God. It was, Nebuchadnezzar set up this statue, and everybody was to bow down to it when the music played. Think about this in our lives. Did you ever have a circumstance or a situation in your life that just continued to replay in your mind over and over and over and over and over? It was like music, like just over and over. And it just wants you to bow down to it. That person, they rolled their eyes at me. They weren't nice to me at church. She didn't speak to me. Oh my gosh, uh, he didn't call me or whatever is going on. And it's over in your mind over and over and again. They hurt me 15 years ago. Do you remember what they did? Mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. Over and over and over and over again. Think about it. It, they, it wants you to bow down to it. Wow. Yeah. It's like the music playing mm -hmm. to get you to bow down to that thing. Wow. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, you know what, Nebuchadnezzar? I know that my God is able to deliver. Always. See, we know that this morning. We know that God is able to deliver. But even if not, I will not bow. So no matter what we're facing this morning, and I loved it because the fire that was meant to destroy them is the fire that loosed them from the ropes that yes. bound yes. them. Hallelujah. Think about that this morning. Hallelujah. I'm talking about freedom. So that those things have been replaying in our hearts and in our minds that God's allowing to come to surface through the fire in your life and the heating up of the flames. He's testing us to see if we'll continue to believe in him. Despite our circumstance or situation. So the fire that was meant to destroy you is the yeah. fire that's yeah. going to set you free. So let's change our perspective this morning about the fire that we might be in. Because when they went, when Nebuchadnezzar went to the fire, the men that he sent to bring them in were gone. So the fire that is meant to destroy you will destroy your enemy in the midst of it. Because God is in the midst of your fire. And the enemy is destroyed. And God's fire is greater than the fire that is meant to destroy you. And then when they were in there, they were loosed from the bondages that bound them. Jesus was in the fire with them. Their hair wasn't even singed. They didn't even smell like smoke at all. And they were delivered from that fire. Why? Because they didn't waver and they kept trusting and believing. And they were okay with, even if not. I'm still going to believe that my God is able to deliver. So if you haven't come out of that circumstance or situation yet, I, I ask you with me this morning, let's have hearts like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that say, even if not, I'm not going to bow. I'm not bowing to anything that's in that trunk. I'm not bowing to self, resentment, unforgiveness, bitterness, hurt, pain. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to let it dominate my mind and replay like music and cause me to get it, get me to bow down. I'm going to look to the blood of Jesus and say, even if not, I'm still going to serve him. Even if not, I'm still going to go his way. Even if not. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. He shall make you free this morning. Remember, you are a new creation. And in closing, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So all of this in your trunk, whatever's in your trunk, because your trunk is different than my trunk, and whatever's going on in your heart, then that's not you anymore. You have a new power source. The Bible says in Romans 6, 3, Know you not that so many of us that were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death? That means when he died, you died with him. See, and you died to that sin nature. You died to the dominance and the power of darkness that was over your life. You died to all of this that bothered you and burdened you and carried you carried around for years and years. You died to that. That means it's unplugged. It's no more. It has no more power over your, your life. It's rendered idle. It's rendered useless. If I plug in a lamp, it's going to turn on. But when I unplug it, it better not turn on. That'd be scary. But when I unplug it, there's no more power source. So when you gave your life to Jesus, he unplugged this sin nature and every burden that would weigh you down and said, it's rendered idle. It's useless. It's no more. You died. When he was buried, you were buried. So all your sin, your transgressions, everything past, present, and future are covered by the blood of Jesus. And they're remembered no more. Now let me add this. Does that give us a license to sin and say, I'm going to do whatever I want. The blood of Jesus is going to cover. No, certainly not. He will give you the grace to overcome everything that you face. But he will forgive you when you fall. When he was buried, you were buried. When he rose, you rose. I'm talking about freedom this morning. And this is something that you need to know. You need to know this. That when he rose, you rose. And when, when you rose, you now have a new power source. And access to a power source that is greater than yourself. So when you need victory, there's victory at that power source. There's victory when you look to the cross and look to the blood of Jesus. There's victory and freedom for you this morning. When he rose, you rose. And it says, the scripture says that we must continue in this truth. Now, if you would come up, because the Lord wants to make us free this morning, and not just freedom at salvation, but a continuous freedom. And I want to close with this example, because this is something personally that has personally helped me in my walk. And I pray that it helps you in your walk of freedom and deliverance with the Lord you don't have to put this up there. I'm going to summarize it. But in 2 Kings 13, 14 through 19, there was a king named Joash. And he was king and he was ruler over Israel. And the Syrians were coming to attack. And sometimes we can feel like everything in life is coming to attack us. Inside, outside, Upside down, right side up, wherever it's coming from, we just feel like there's constantly an attack upon our faith and upon our life. And that's how Joash was feeling at this moment. But thank God for the prophet Elisha that was on the scene. And Joash inquired of the Lord, how shall I have deliverance? How shall I have freedom? What should I do? See, when you don't know what to do, be still for a moment and seek the face of God. And I'm telling you, he will tell you what to do. And Joash went to the prophet and said, I don't know what to do, but they're coming. And God told Joash through the Holy Spirit and through the wisdom of the Lord. He said, go put your hand on the bow. 
There was a bow and arrow. Go put your hand upon the cross. Go lay a hold of the blood. Go lay a hold of Jesus. Go put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on the bow and he brought it back. And Elijah, a type of the Holy Spirit, came and placed his hands over Joash's hands. See, you're not alone in what you're going through. You're not alone in what you're facing. The Holy Spirit has come to help you. So he places his hands over the king's hands. And he said, open up the window towards the east, the, where the sun rises. So by faith, Joash goes and he opens up the window where the sun is going to rise. I'm telling you this morning, the sun is going to rise on your circumstance or your situation. So face the way of the sun. Lay a hold of the cross and the blood of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will then empower you. But there's something you must do. Because then he says, smite the arrow of the Lord's deliverance yeah. on the ground. So he smites the arrow on the ground. Okay? Lord, there that thing is again, and we look to the blood. But here it comes again. We look to the blood. Here it comes again. We look to the blood. And then Joash, after three times, he stopped. He stopped smiting the arrows on the ground. And Elijah said, Joash, why'd you stop? That's only partial of what I had for you. See, the Lord doesn't want us to stop believing. He said, if you want to smell the arrow five or six times, we would have delivered Israel completely and fully. See, sometimes in our walk, we get discouraged. So we just stop looking and we stop believing and we stop striking the arrows on the ground and we only got partially of what God has for us. But if you would stand with me this morning, I want to tell you this morning that God has so much more for you this morning. Keep striking the arrows ground. Keep looking to the blood of Jesus because it's not over. It's not over. I don't know what it is that's been going on or what you've been facing this morning, but I know that the Lord had asked me to come here like he told Moses, tell them that I am sent me. And whatever I have it this morning. And I just felt that on my heart that, that I am sent me here to Patterson, Louisiana to tell you that you can be free. To tell you that it's okay to come as you are. To tell you to let go of all that you've been holding on to. And let me set you free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So when he does it, it's going to be eternal work. And it's never going to bother you again. But keep striking those arrows. Keep striking them. So as Naya sings, I ask you, if there's anything, if there's anything, if you just need a freedom to worship, if you need a freedom to live for him, if you need him to reveal more of himself to you, whatever it is you need, you need. I am what your family needs. I am here. So whatever you need, just come to the altar and let him minister freedom to you this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus.